Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on August 28, 2021 at approximately 9.07 a.m. PST. Well, I talked to you yesterday about focus, and here's the side effect of focus in the, in the short term. A few days ago, I told you I was getting a new computer, and I didn't know where I was exactly going to set it up. Well, as it turns out, it's now up and running. I've just got a call to make to get everything set up so I can transfer the information over to it. But the seat that you're looking at right here, that's at the other computer desk. So we're going back to a different view, going back to an old view, view perspective that we had. Okay, simply because it means that this computer can go away, but it also means, like, this computer has a new home that it'll go to. But much more importantly for me, is it means I end up with a with a fourth monitor available. So we're going. I'm going to have a laptop, a 17 inch laptop, with a 19 inch, a a 19 inch monitor, a 21 inch monitor, and over there right now is the 26 inch monitor. All in all, I get an awful lot more screen room, which is what I actually require in order to do my work. Now, I've already got a lot done that I was supposed to be getting done today, but this particular desk that I'm working on will become my uh, my art de my art desk for doing for working on figures, which means I'll be able to get them set up a lot more effectively as well. I'm just debating the one thing I haven't quite decided is whether this this shelf that I've got here, whether I'm going to move it or not. And I think what's going to happen, depending on the on, on the arrangement I can work out, I may end up leaving the shelf here to give me a little bit more versatility as far as figures go. But we'll take a look at that. I'll let you know tomorrow. But this really boils down to an issue of getting an idea in mind, getting a project in mind, and moving things that aren't working with it. Okay, so again, it boils down to this. When we take, because the big message that I return to bring to people around the world is that working together, we can make this a better world. Okay, we can make it more enjoyable for most people. But I do require your assistance to do that because one person alone isn't going to change the world, but one person can trigger and have, you know, one person can trigger a, a change. But with your help in, in sharing this video around the world, okay, and sharing the message to the people that don't have a video, have access to video, we can change this world. Okay, in spite of all the chaos that's going on, Chaos eventually settles down into a routine. The question is, are we going to build that routine based on fear, or are we going to build it based on love? The call is yours. Okay. Basically, it boils down to, do we want fear and war, or do we want, do we want love and peace? Personally, I choose peace. Of course, in my case, I became rather reclusive to attain it. I don't watch the news. I don't listen to the to the to news podcasts and that sort of thing. And I avoid a lot of people. I have become very reclusive in a lot of ways. Okay, but that's my choice, not yours. Okay, it doesn't change what I'm seeing in the world today. Okay, because I do have internet, so obviously I get some information, and I do have people contacting me. You know, given what I do for a living anyway. But, again, it boils down to taking a look at the way your life is going and asking yourself one question. So before I get on to that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more information coming up. We're starting to, we're doing our best to get organized on that end. Okay, but I usually get one out a week, uh, one out a day. So don't forget, if you say, when you subscribe to the videos, when you subscribe to the channel, remember to hit the alert bell to let you know when the next one comes up. Okay, now, from that end, take a look at your world. 
Okay, pick any one, and just pick one thing you're not content with. That's where it starts. Now, it's real easy to pick something you're not happy with in your life. Okay, a lot easier to pick what you're not currently happy with than it is to figure out something you might be content with 10 years down the road. Okay, now I've started on some pretty big projects. One is getting, the, getting this message out around the world, regardless of nationality, regardless of race, species. It doesn't matter. Everybody is part of the same equation, and we are all at exactly the same point in time. Okay, we are all sitting right here, right now. And this is the only time in existence that anybody can make anything happen, whether it's good or bad. Okay, now, if you've got a suggestion, you know, if you've got a suggestion of a topic you would like me to cover, absolutely, leave it in the comments below. I do go through them and do my best to respond to each one. Okay, now I'm looking for what I'm, what I'm working on deciding on is exactly what to hit first. I'd love to say it was going to come out in an organized fashion, but I tried that before and it doesn't work, at least not for me. Okay, but if you've got topics or if you've got questions, absolutely drop me a line, you know, drop me a line in the comments. If you've got something of a more personal nature from your standpoint, something you don't want the whole world to know about, there's a whole list of con contact points below this video that you can reach me at. Okay, um, just, because, just because I know some people have tried this. If you find if you track down my phone number, I will tell you if I don't recognize the phone number that's coming in, the odds are I won't be answering the phone. So, so if you do try and track down my phone number, text me first, okay, and let me know who you are, where you may, where you know me from, okay, and what the number is, so that frankly, when you do call. I'll actually pick up the phone because I don't answer unknown call, un unknown calls on the whole. Once in a while I may, but it's a long shot. Okay, there's a lot of uh, people that have, that have tried contacting me and I'm looking at it going, I don't know that number, I have no idea where it's from and I get way too many scam calls. And, you know, that's something that I'm sure all of you are aware of. I mean, it's, you know, I'm up in Canada. And I have gotten calls that have told me my SIN number, my social insurance number, has been temporarily suspended. Okay, which is great. It's kind of like saying the government says you no longer exist. Which, you know, I guess means you don't have to pay taxes and what have you. I'll tell you right now, you really do. But I've had calls like that. I get a staggering number of calls from the from custom services telling me that my that there has been some some um, questionable activity at the border, you know, customs at the customs border that I need to be aware of. And of course, I'm thinking, number one, I don't go across the border. Number two, I don't deal across the border aside from whatever comes across in video, but I don't order things on the whole. And number three, if I was in trouble by the customs office, they wouldn't be phoning me to warn me. They'd show up on the doorstep with police in hand, that sort of thing. Okay, but I just got tired of getting phone calls like this. And then I get phone calls from, and then I get the scam calls from people going, oh, your visa has been overcharged, which is really kind of a funny setup when you think I don't own a visa. Okay, you know, so, and then of course they phone up and go just, you know, they'll, they'll ask for the information to tell me what the visa number is and what have you. I'm like, tell you what. You tell me what visa number you've got, and I'll tell you whether it matches mine. Because I'm not giving you mine. Okay. Now, these are just the number of scams. These are just a number of little scams. But the best one I got was an email scam. Somebody from somewhere in the southeastern states sent me a, a message that my last trip to the auto dealer, why, you know, there was some discrepancy on the, on the payment that was supposed to go through. Which is really cute because I have been into the States in, and this was just a month or so back, which is really wonderful 
when you think I haven't been across the state, across the border, since the last Forest Moon Paranormal um, UFO conference down in Skagit County, Washington. Okay, I don't travel. Like I barely leave my own my own neighborhood in my own in my own city. Okay. So this is why I don't answer phone calls that I don't know. I'm just tired of dealing with people that are absolutely flat out dishonest. Okay, I'm not interested. And I used to, when I was dating, before I found my other half, I'd get people that were that were trying to, you know, they constantly, they'd be constantly asking for money. And I'm like, would you go away? <laughs> okay. I just don't deal with them, so I cut myself off from a lot of people, which is problematic for my for my son, because I'm not a good social. I'm not a good person to demonstrate social skills. Yes, I'm I'm sociable when I'm out. Okay, there's no question there. I'm friendly to people. I just don't go around them, which for me works out really well. But we get a little sidetracked here. Um, like I said, the trick to making your life work better is pick something you're not content with and start adjusting the energy to it. Now, remember, this funny little list that I've got here, keep forgetting where I put it. I started moving it back over there, but this funny little list, okay, all you start with is three things on it, but keep those three things down to a 15 minute to half hour to half hour duration. If the task has to be longer than that, break it into two. Okay, it's going to take me a fair chunk to get this office to get the computer moved from here over to there. The computer's over there, but I've got to move all the monitors and what have you, and that's going to take some time. That's not a bad thing, but you take your, your goals. Like in this case, I have to figure out a number of things. You know, well, that won't work. I'm not going to do that right now. At least not with my left hand. It takes too much concentration right now. You see, I can write with my right hand without even thinking about it. My left hand, not quite so much so. But when you're looking at when you're looking at getting your life moving, Feng Shui works really well. Understand the first thing you install in your office when you're rearranging the office. Pick wherever you're working on your finances. Okay. And I've got a sign right up here that says, I have legally attained a minimum of $2,000 by August 31st, 2021 at one minute to midnight. Now, the reality is I did that. I put that sign up there earlier in the month. And within three days, I had almost bro broken that to that $2,000 mark. $2,000 for me is what it costs to run my household. Okay, that's just the reality behind it. Okay, so with that in mind, get a sign like that, literally saying that. Put it somewhere where you see it regularly for your in your area where you're working on your finances. Because much as family is the backbone of society, finances seem to be the backbone of making your house run. Because frankly, if you don't have your finances in order, you're going to have a heck of a time keeping a roof over your head. Okay. So you set the first thing you do is set up the finance, set up the area where you're putting your finances. Okay. Get everything else off your desk. Get your office sorted around so it's clear, so there's no clutter on it, so that you can function. Now the nice part about it is I'm starting up with a brand new setup. Okay. Hearing people outside. That's okay. That's my window open. Because frankly, I'm still overheating. And I don't get the feeling. That I don't think it's that hot, really. Uh, what are we? Just checking temperature here. There we are. See, it's only 14 degrees here, which really is... 14 degrees is like about 60, 65, and I'm still hot. Which gives you an idea how that's working. But... When you get you get the energy moving properly in your office desk, wherever you work on your finances, where, wherever you work on your bills, okay, it's likely the same place you work on your correspondence, but you'll find by getting the energy in your house working properly, 
you don't have the same conflict, you know, the same struggle trying to write as you do when it's cluttered. If you don't believe me, that's that's okay. I'm not expecting people to believe me directly. Give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, you'll find you will find I'm sure of it because I know I did that once you get the get the energy moving properly, you will think more clearly. You'll feel more energetic. You'll be able to get more accomplished. Okay. Now I made a, I I had a little bit of a twist this morning because I ended up waking up at like three o'clock. 3.30 in the morning. So I was up for two or three hours, did a bunch of stuff, went and grabbed, a, grabbed an hour's nap at 7. Okay, this seems to be normal. Okay, at least normal for me. I keep going, you know, it would be nice to sleep through the night, but apparently I don't do that anymore. Okay, so pick a direction that you're, that you're aiming to go. And I spent, I took yesterday to explain how this one major project that I'm working on, the Elder Bakken Chronicles, is starting to, to lay out. Okay. The same thing applies with, with organizing this office. So as soon as I'm done the video, uh, as soon as I'm done this recording, then I start moving the office around, and hopefully that means I will be able to do the computer itself will be the last thing I move, but the monitors will all go today and get everything set up over the other side, and then I've just got to move the, the data. But that's going to be an ongoing project, probably for the better portion of today. Okay, and while I'm doing that, I will be getting the rest of things organized. Okay, but it boils down to staying focused on what you're actually striving to accomplish. If you've got, it doesn't matter what the, what the project, Okay, maybe your project is something as simple as getting your house organized. Well, like I said, the office is the backbone of running the of running the house. However, in most people's cases, the kitchen is the backbone of the of the of the, of the household itself. Okay, so pick a room. Doesn't matter what room. Whichever one you're going to be functioning in the most or whichever room you relax in the most that's where you start okay get one room at a, at a time done and i will warn you okay what i found was this if you've got a spare room that you can work with take everything that you don't know exactly where it goes and get it into one room so you get the clutter out of the way it will make that one room look like an absolute disaster Okay, and then you'll have to go through it anyway. So while you're doing that, sort out the stuff that you can. Get rid of the stuff you don't require. One of the biggest things I've noticed with people is the family unit went this way. Like it used to be really tight knit, but people have lost focus on what the family unit is. Okay, so with that in mind, the way we change that, because the family is still, you still require that support. Talk to any kid, like I've, I've talked to a lot of kids, and the one thing I've found with them is this. There's three types of parents that, that they have. Okay, and this is just a gross oversimplification. You've got the parents that are overprotective, that, ran, that control everything, that will demand where kids are going on the minute sort of thing. They want to know exactly where the child is. You've got the parents that and the parents that absolutely don't care at all. Okay, you get those two ends, but the parents that the kids like the most are the one that get along with the most and are open to the most are the parents that yes, that desire to know what's going on with the kids, but are not trying to make them live their life as per what the parents grew up with. Now, in that, in that respect, I'm lucky. You know, I'm lucky from the standpoint of I don't desire my, my child and my children to live the way I do. Okay, the biggest problem I have where it comes to that is because of my own issues, I became rather reclusive, which is why I go to one restaurant, generally speaking, one, one or two grocery stores, and I go for a walk at a park that is literally across the street from me. Other than that, I lock myself in my house. Most of the time, I lock myself in my office. And I shouldn't say lock, because I leave the door open most of the time. 
But how you then organize your life is up to you. I'm just saying that when you when you get your household running properly, running comfortably, when the clutter is gone, when the energy is running smoothly, you'll find it easier to deal with people. Okay, you'll find it easier to deal with the way the world is going. Now, admittedly, there is a staggering amount of chaos out there. But something I really do desire to point out, okay, when we're looking at the way the world is running, keep one thing in mind. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to hold that thought and go on to this thing. And tomorrow, I'm going to look at the at the focus on what people are saying about you know about who is to blame for the you know who is to blame for the way this world is. So tomorrow when I come back, and no, I'm not at the end of the video. It just dawned on me. Tomorrow when I come back, I will talk about what I see as the backbone to this issue of people pointing the finger at whatever and claiming that's the way the world is. Okay. And we can live in that. You can live, you've got your, your world the way it is. Right now, your house is in whatever state it's in. Your social circle is whatever it is. You can choose to stay that way. Okay. You can choose to live in that, in that pattern. Personally, I'm not happy with mine, which is why I'm changing mine. Okay, and all I'm doing here is I'm offering the tools that I personally use that have personally worked for me. That doesn't mean they all will work for you, but it does mean that they do work. Okay, so your choice is leave your life the way it is and carry on, which is your right. This is the one nice thing about having freedom of choice. But if you're not content with even one aspect of your life, that's where the tools that I'm on that I've kind of returned to offer you on how to cope with things, how to initiate change, and how to look at the world in a way that may help you eliminate some of the stresses you're dealing with. Okay, you'll be amazed how much better you sleep when you get your the junk out of your bedroom. Which, by the way, is one of those funny little things that sits way back in the back of my house that I've got to deal with. A lot of empty boxes that I've got floating around that I just haven't gotten around to doing anything with. But it really boils down to deciding what you desire. Okay, now I'm not the one to tell you what's going to make your world better and what's going to make your world worse. I will tell you from what I've seen, the way the world currently is going needs a whole lot of help. It really requires it. But in order for that to happen, it's going to require the assistance of each and every entity in existence to turn this around. Now, it will not make everybody happy. There are people out there that will look at it and go, I'm not changing because why should I have to? Okay, why should I have to change for somebody else? Well, you don't. You have to change. If you're not content, then the issue is you've got to change. Because you cannot control the way other people feel. You cannot control the way they behave. But you can control how you respond to how they behave. Now, some people would say, you're talking about getting along with people. And you're talking about, you know, how you've got to alter to get along with them. And yet, you're telling us that you've pulled back inside your house and that's where you, where you stay. And that is how I chose to stay. That is absolutely true. I could have stayed out there dealing with people, but quite frankly, it got to be way too much from my standpoint. You got to remember, I'm also empathic, meaning I physically pick up what other people are going through. The really complicated part for me is I physically pick up what the planet is going through, which, by the way, is just another person. Okay, so I made a choice. Instead of continually going out there getting really stressed out because I couldn't block out what I was picking up and staying at home where I could cope with it, where I could deal with it and still address the situation. Staying home was a much better setup for everybody. Okay, trust me, it's much better seeing me in a good mood than it is seeing me really stressed. So I just chose that path. Now that works for me. Now this is why when everything went 
all haywire a couple of years back. This is why when we were told stay home, stay away from people and drink and drink warm liquids because it's good for your lungs. I sat there and went, well, let's see. I don't really want to didn't really desire to go out anyway. Got a 30 cup urn at home. I'm good to go. And in all fairness, it's worked out really well because instead of my having to tell people I don't desire to go there, I could use the issue of, look, we're all on lockdown. Well, lockdown will end. I personally remember living through the Black Plague, through the Black Death, okay, where, if I remember the numbers correctly, was roughly a third of the population died, okay. So, been there, done that, experienced the whole dang thing. Now, I remember past lives. Many people have researched it, and let me tell you, what they write about, about that period of time is nothing compared to the horror that was there. Okay, but even that came to an end. Okay, now just to put that in perspective, I think we're pushing past the 18 month mark now. When the Black Death hit, it was a five year run, roughly. Okay, before things started to slow down and we stopped having people drop dead on us. Lost a lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of people, you know, just went. But it came to an end and the world resumed. Okay, now the question is, are we going to continue living in fear or are we going to start figuring out how to live with the current world? That's where the option has to be. And it starts with looking at your own home. Is your own home running smoothly? Are you content with the way it's running? If the answer is yes, that is fantastic. Even if the answer is yes, or maybe especially if the answer is yes. Drop me a message in the comments below and let me know. Because if there's one thing I look forward to, it's things like a message I got from one person. But I put out a video, I made a couple of suggestions to a couple of changes that had to be done, you know, that would be wise to do. The person turned around, followed them, and then writes me back and goes, look, I followed this, this path you suggested, and it worked and now I am happily living with this other person. I've got it. We've moved to where to where we both desired to move to. Everything's going great. And, you know, messages like that I just absolutely love to get. And the reason for it is this. The job I do, I get a lot of people phoning up going, my world is a mess. I don't like the way my world is. So I'll give them points, pointers or give them directions on what they can do. And they'll refuse to do them, and then they phone me back and go, I don't want to do that, so my life is a mess. What should I do? I, I'm not happy. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more than frustrating than telling somebody that asks the question, this is a path to try to give to give a shot at. If you if you haven't done it, give, the, give this shot a whirl. And them tell you, I don't want to do that. Or better yet, and I know virtually every teenager on the planet makes this comment, and many of the adults. You warn them something's going to happen, and they go, oh, that won't happen to me. You would be amazed how many people are dead because of the fact that it wouldn't happen to them. Okay, and to those of you that are of the opinion that what I can't see can't hurt me, tell you what. Take your offense and straighten it out and see how much more relaxed you are. Okay, now you're not going to see the energy flow, but you'll certainly feel it. Okay, I mean, I get there's a, a lot of ways I could go with that. But the reality is reorganize things, get the energy running smoothly, and you'll find your life is a whole lot more enjoyable. Okay, now you don't have to take my word for it, but if your life isn't happy the way it is, this would be the time to start making the changes. Right here, right now. Now, I will be back again tomorrow. And like I said, I'm going to take a look tomorrow on the issue of where all this fear is being pointed to and where it actually sits. And at least in my opinion. Now, on that note, I'm going to leave you with that. Until tomorrow, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.